Um, two of my favorite um, uh, discrepancies or problems with these manuscripts are the two up here I'll talk about in just a second. And well, uh, it's, you can split hairs with the believer all day long over contradictions in the Bible. And a good apologist will find ways to reconcile those, and a good skeptic will find ways to you know, throw those reconciliations out the window. Um, but two of my favorites here, the, obviously the Catholic Church and, and some other um, <coughs> groups hold on to the Virgin Mary very closely. Right? This was you know, this Old Testament prophecy, and now we have the virgin birth of Jesus. Uh, the, the trouble is, the Greek word used in the earliest and best known manuscripts is parthenos, which simply means young woman. Um, it wasn't specified through that the language that it would be a virgin at this point, it would be you know, the savior of mankind, it simply a young woman. Uh, try telling that to a good Catholic these days, it doesn't matter. Trapped by, when I say trapped by uh, tradition, you get a belief that's old enough, it doesn't matter where it came from or how correct it is or how much you can point out how it's in error, that's tradition. That's what they believe. Okay. And the other one, uh, being born again, there's a, uh, <clears throat> a scene. There's a scene in the Bible where uh, Jesus is speaking with Nicodemus. And Nicodemus asks him, what do I have to do to make it to heaven? And Jesus says, you know, unless you are born again, uh, you cannot enter the kingdom. Nicodemus misunderstands. He says, well, I've already been born once. How can I, you know, I might re-enter the womb and be born again? He doesn't understand. Jesus clarifies, said, no, unless you're born from above, you know, expressing a symbolic rebirth through God above, uh, which is nice. It's, it's kind of pretty. Unfortunately, the, uh, the wordplay there, the mistake, only works in Greek. Uh, you know, you have these, these, uh, <clears throat> Words with the same pronunciation, different meanings. Um, but it's unlikely that Jesus spoke Greek. It's even less likely that Nicodemus, one of the Pharisees, uh, spoke Greek either. Um, so just that whole misunderstanding kind of falls on its face when you examine it linguistically and try and understand. Put yourself in their shoes. You know, they would have been speaking Aramaic or, um, or possibly you know, Hebrew. Most likely, we're not speaking uh, Greek.